Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video I am taking a look at DID's uh, Fallstrom Jaeger Axel. Fallstrom Jaeger was uh, Germany's airborne troops and it's a fun word to say. Now as you can see by the box here this was their uh, limited edition uh, commemorating their 20th anniversary in business and so they came out with this special box um, I normally don't review boxes but um, in this case I thought I should um, unlike a regular DID box which just covers the front and has magnetic flaps on the side this one goes completely around and acts as a sleeve and you'll want to be careful when carrying it um, after you've cut the, the, the seals because it easily slips out. The other thing is on the front, uh, this piece on the front, it's got the magnets to hold it together on the one side and on this side it's just double sided tape is used to hold it on and it has a tendency to come off. Um, the, so the cover does, like all of them, it does unfold and you do have this scene you can use for a backdrop with your figures if you so desire. Um, so there's that and then inside there's a, uh, a cover photo. So let's get to the contents. Um, the other thing that you will find inside is a 20th anniversary catalog. It is not a comprehensive um, catalog. There's quite a few figures that I have, including new ones that are not in the catalog. So. Um, but uh, here you have it. It's still a nice little thing to have. And then they've got this little metal 20, uh, 20th anniversary edition metal thing with uh, German Fallschirmjäger axle on there. I don't really know why anyone would want that, but there you have it. I guess 100 years from now, your kids, your descendants could show it on the Antiques Roadshow and if you've got the whole thing it'd be, hey, it's worth a thousand dollars. Anyway, let's look at the figure. There you have it. Um, really nice head sculpt. I think so. Uh, one thing you want to do with all these figures and not just DID it on all of them no matter who manufacture them is you want to twist or bend the knees because sometimes the 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 legs and the arms get twisted out of shape while they're getting dressed and it, it's hard to tell and if you have to fix something you want to do it before you assemble and pose the figure so sometimes the elbow gets twisted inward the other thing is to check the feet and make sure I've had a couple where the feet aren't all the way down into the bottom of the shoes or boots. So you want to check that. So the nice thing, DID also details the soles of their shoes and boots. Um, so there you have it. Uh, he is wearing a flight blouse. Fallschirmjäger pants, and then he's got two cuff titles. Uh, one that says Africa, which means he served in North Africa, obviously. And Creta, uh, he, sir, he fought in the Battle of Crete. So, um, he's got the silver lace around his collar and on his epaulets and a single um, pip on his epaulet. So he is... Uh, a sergeant. I'm not sure which rank of sergeant, but he is. So he is an NCO. Um, let's see. 
He, he's got, oh, excuse me. He's got a visor cap, a helmet with a camouflage cover, a Fallschirm Jaeger helmet, uh, a toque. This slips over the head. Um, they could pull it up to cover their lower mouth or over the head, you know, when it's cold. Uh, he's got a set of dog tags. Um, binoculars. He's got a gas mask and a gas mask canister that fits on it and this does fit on his head. There's straps. Take these out. Um, he has a flare pistol which you can open. There's a couple of flares here. The flares fit in the pistol. There's a long one and a short one. I don't know what the difference between the two are, but um, anyway, that's what we got. Binoculars. He has, they call this a boot knife. Um, it's got a little clip so you can clip it on onto the uniform somewhere. The knife, this is very loose it easily slips in and out. Um, that would be one criticism I have of it. So when you put them on, you want to make sure it's pointing upward so it doesn't fall out on you. He's got a pistol and I think the ammo clip comes out. I'm not sure, but anyway, there's his a pistol. He's got this machine gun here. These legs slip down so here is uh he's got three um ammo cartridges that slip into this machine gun. Get it in the right order. Right side. Well, there you go. It's got a real leather strap on it. A shovel, or actually this is not a shovel, it's an entrenching tool. In the military, that's an entrenching tool, not a shovel. He's got his mess kit. These do open up, um, but the strap and the buckle is such a pain putting them back on. I'm not going to do that. Likewise with his um, canteen. This part up here is actually a cup that comes out, and those are the handles. I actually should do a figure where he's holding one of those. And then he's got a grenade. He's got a cigarette. Oh, here's another clip for his um, pistol. Some brass bullets. Some spare buttons. He's got some badges. Uh, a Fallschirmjäger badge and an iron cross. He's, he's got some insi and then some insignia. And let's see what's underneath this layer. So he's got a leather belt and a Y strap to go with it. That's what these these rings are for. Here is a leather cover. Uh, the entrenching tool slips in it and that slips on his belt. Holster for his pistol and the extra clip goes in that side piece. Here is what they call a gravity knife. I don't know where that one that would go on his uniform. He's got a little wrist 
watch. Here is a bag for carrying his gas mask. The ubiquitous bread bag. These weren't used just for carrying bread in them, though. Um, so. Now here is something that is was unique to the Fallschirm Jaegers. Um, there was a couple of different versions of them, but this is he wore over that uniform for when he jumped out of the airplane with his parachute on, obviously. And then he's got this ammo. I guess you'd call that a pouch. There are, at the top, there's two extra empty pouches that can be opened up to put these extra clips in, ammo clips. Um, the rest of these are just weighted down with, they can't be opened, but they've got metal blanks in them, so it looks like they're full, and it weighs, the, weighs it down. And then he's got, besides the bendy hands that come on the figure, he's got a bunch of, uh, you know, two sets of molded hands. So, that's everything that comes with Axel. So, let's put them together and see how he looks. So here's Axel and all his Fallschirmjäger glory. Um, a couple of things I, I failed to mention earlier. Uh, this piece, it almost got lost in the styrofoam in the box. Um, this spike piece fits on the end of the rifle. Acts like a, a bayonet. I don't know if you'd actually call it a bayonet though since it's not a bladed weapon. but it's got a sharp point on the end, and when not in use, it slips in there like that. And this this weapon, this his uh, machine gun here, it is made all out of metal, so it does have some weight to it, and it's got a genuine leather um, sling. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is this um, smock-like garment. Uh, it wraps around the legs on the bottom and has some snaps, as you can see on this figure. And it also has this, um, I guess you'd call it a pocket that holds the flare pistol. So, um, which I'll show on here, but it's, it's, it's hard to see. Um, this figure, he's just wearing his service uniform in a relaxed pose, smoking a cigarette. Um, one thing I will note is his holster for his pistol. Um, once you put the, the pistol in it, it pretty much fills up and it's very hard getting this strap back into the buckle. It barely, the end of the strap barely goes into the second fitting of the buckle. So, I think in any future figures I have that have a, a holster like this with this kind of uh, cover on the top, I I just leave the pistol out because it it's it is very hard getting it that strap buckled. Um, and honestly, um, you wouldn't. I don't think you'd even know if the the pistol was in there or not. Um, the other thing I would I notice on the figure, he does have a padded undersuit, but I wish it had filled out his shoulders a little bit more. Um, the sh the uniform doesn't fit him too well on the shoulders, and with these baggy pants, he he just he doesn't have that classic V shape. Um, you know he. Makes, makes it look like his hips and his, his legs are 
much wider than the rest of the body. So, um, also if you notice uh, when I first took him out of the box, his, his pants were down here. The bottom of the pants are tied together. Um, I just push that further up his his leg above the boot and and push the material up so that the uh, pants were bloused higher up on his ankle boots. So um, the other thing that was a little bit tricky was putting this badge on and I still it's still not vertical it's a little bit leaning to the left. The, the pin is not straight up and down but at a slant so that was a little bit tricky so um, and then on this with him fully kitted out um, you can see he's got his grenade in his belt his boot knife is stuck into his smock here um, He's got his gas mask and its pouch, uh, the shovel, or the e entrenching tool, sorry, a bread bag with his canteen and, and mess kit. Uh, here you could see that flare pistol. Uh, the wash, what, what you really can't see is the Y straps there underneath here. Um, these, these straps unsnap so you can fit it over his belt, but he, they're so heavy and there's so much stuff there. I didn't want to deal with it. Um, the, and you can see how it, this pinches the, um, the way it gathers and it snaps together. And then with the baggy pants, I, it, it looks kind of weird to me, but I, I guess that's accurate. Um, you can button this up if you want tighter, but if you wanted to do a really tight fit, um, I would take his tunic off, um, since you wouldn't see it. But, uh, the other thing is I couldn't fit the toque on his head with the helmet too. Um, the, the, the one adjective I would give to him when he's fully kitted out like this is that he's, it's, um, somewhat clumsy. There's just so much stuff on him gathered around in the back here. And I originally, I wanted him holding the gun in front of him with that spike sticking out because I wanted to show that off. But between all this stuff he's got in front and then this thing that sticks out in the front it, it was it I just couldn't get it to work um so I went with this relaxed pose with the um gun slung on his you know resting on his shoulder and even that was hard to get um but I managed it um so there you have it I this was a limited edition figure, it being their anniversary. And I knew I wanted at least these two figures. So I didn't know if it would be hard to get loose parts being at, at limited edition. So I went and bought two complete figure sets. So I have quite a bit of stuff left over um, from this figure. And I actually have another the the body and head sculpt. Uh, I went and bought one of those in case I wanted to use it to kit bash another figure. Um, not necessarily this, but some other figure. Um, so it wouldn't take much more to... All I'd really need is this uniform set. Um, and I can create a third figure. Um, but I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if, if I can get enough variation. Um, you know, if, if I can figure out a, to correct the problems I had with this one, with, with the clumsiness of it, maybe not give him all this equipment. Um, maybe do that. Uh, the other thing I, I just noticed that's worth pointing out is this insignia. Um, 
he, he did come with this insignia, but in none of their photographs do they show him wearing it. Fortunately, I have a, a previous Fallschirmjäger figure that also has that insignia, so I knew where to where to where to add it on on him. So, but there you have it. There's Axel, um, the Fallschirmjäger sergeant. Uh, another addition to my Luftwaffe collection. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, any comments, please add them or any questions. Thank you for coming by.